Okay. Um, Marching. Yeah. 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 Good, 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 good. good. Alright, everybody good? Okay. Alright. So today is another day. And um, I'm just standing on the protocols of Mama Imakus. And other things that she said that when we get there, um, how you feel, whatever you feel, that is what it is. And um, it's going to be um, something that you're going to ponder over. Um, for the rest of the day you are here and then when you go back. So um, anyway, we are going to the popularly known as Cape Coast Castle. Um, Cape Coast Castle um, was once the area in which the castle is currently built now. was once called Cabo Castle. Cabo Castle is a Dutch word which means short cape. Again, just to let you know that, the, uh, sorry, it's a Portuguese word which means short cape. Short cape. C A P E, short cape. Oh. Yeah, short cape. A Portuguese word which means that. And uh, let you know that the Portuguese were the first to have come here. And so they controlled the controlled majority of the coastline here. And later on, um, the Swedes took over from the Portuguese and then they built a timber lord. Sweden, you know, was from Sweden? Yes, they were here as well. And uh, they built a timber lodge, so in wood form. And then the British took over. So the first timber lodge that was built was built in 1555. And then in, in 1650s, um, the British took over. But just like in Europe, where there was war between the Europeans, you know, there were English, French war, Dutch, English war, and all this. Whilst it was going up in England and other places, the same thing was happening down here as well. So each European wanted domination over the coastline and over the trade that was happening here in Africa. And so by the 1700s, the British had taken over the Cape Coast town and had built um, the Cape Coast castle, which you see now. And um, now it has been more open than uh, expanded. The British uh, abolished slavery, they say in their books in, 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 in England and Europe, around 1807 but it never got stopped here in the Gold Coast until 1837 thereabout and even till then there was still illegal slavery going on and so the Cape Coast dungeons is one of the largest dungeons in Ghana we have three big of these we call them castles three of them the Omina is the first the oldest um, and then the second is Cape Coast and the third is the one in Accra um, called the Christian Bok or popularly known as Osu Castle and so these three ones were very very important in that around the 19th century the British had bought all these three of them and were using them so the Elmina Castle when the English took over from the Dutch they turned it into a, a police training school as well and then used the Cape Coast as the administrative headquarters and then also when they moved to Accra they moved to Accra and took over the Christian Borg and then Accra became its capital in 1877 when they moved to Accra so to that they were, they were here and majority of what the British used was here in this um, dungeons also the first um, that um, British um, fort or you call it dungeon that was built when we are going heading towards back to Accra there's a fort that was built it's now called Fort Amsterdam and the original name was called Fort York but again just to let you know that during the Anglo-Dutch war there was uh, a war in America where you now you have New York 
the Dutch built a fort there. And so when the British took over it, they named it Fort York, which is now New York. And here, when the British built, the Dutch defeated the British and took over it here, so they named it Fort Amsterdam. And so dotted along the coastline of Ghana, we have over 40, 50 plus forts and castles that were used during the transatlantic. Yeah, also, we also put in the European part, European part of uh, when we say transatlantic European slave trade. Yeah, it's not just yeah, um, to, to you know to identify the culprits. Yes. So the one thing about here is when Ghana celebrated Emancipation Day, and when we were at Asin Manso, the guy spoke to us about the door of no return. Now we have the door of return on the opposite side. And that when the two remains were brought in, they came on the opposite side, signifying that we are welcoming our brothers and sisters from the diaspora to come back home. And so you will see that. And also when we get there, some few highlights that you will see, we would actually go down into the male slave dungeon. And uh, the dungeon could hold about a thousand enslaved males. A thousand. Each chamber is five chambers. Each chamber could hold 200 males. And um, you would also see uh, a, a place called a condemned cell. The condemned cell was for the freedom fighters, those who resisted, those who went on hunger strike, those who actually fought for their freedom. And in there, they were kept in there for them to die. So you get to see that. And then also, you get to see uh, the female dungeon, and then we would go out on the door of no return, but we would come back in the door of return. So these are the main highlights of the, uh, the Cape Coast castle, uh, what we're gonna see. And then also, um, you're gonna see um, the row, the, the church, and all the things that played during the trade. And so we're going to have a, it's mostly between a 45 to 1 hour um, tour. And then also the, the Ghana Monuments Board have a museum. So there's a museum up there. When we get there, depending on time, depending on um, Bomani, you can have some minutes to go into the museum, which tells you from the beginning, the indigenous, all the way to the transatlantic slave trade. And you get to see some paintings, some artifacts, some things that um, have been gathered over the years. And so, fast forward, Cape Coast became a hub during the British administration. And so, a lot of schools were built. So most of the earlier schools in Ghana are actually built in Cape Coast. But it actually started in the Cape Coast castle or dungeons in that the enslaved women where the English merchant soldiers had relations with rape, abuse and used had relations with the children that came out. But they started teaching in, in there. And as the numbers kept growing, they had to build schools outside the castle. So some schools started like that. And then it spread. And other missionaries also built schools as well. So you get to see that. And then you you get to see also uh, one local who was a Ghanaian sent over and trained, came back as a missionary during the time of um, slavery, and whose remains are also buried in the Cape Coast um, courtyard, the dungeons. You get to see these highlights. So basically, this is the whole thing. Uh, we're gonna hear, see, and listen more of the Cape Coast and the atrocity that happened during the transatlantic slave trade. All right, any question? Okay. 